Good afternoon. It's a beautiful day in the Pacific Northwest. Northwest Washington, just south of the Canadian border. It's July 13th, 2023. And today I want to talk about this berry right here. Sea buckthorn, also known as sea berry. The berries are not very large, but this is this variety is among the largest that I've had because they do get there's a lot of wild kind that are a lot smaller than this, and this one just produces abundantly. So for those of you that have never tried sea buckthorn or heard of it, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Sea berry or sea buckthorn is a nitrogen fixer, meaning it has the ability to take nitrogen from the atmosphere and fix it into the soil. So this bush here does not need any fertilizer to grow. It can grow in mountainous rocky soil with no fertilizer whatsoever. The berries are very densely packed with almost every single omega fatty acid and as well as have over five times or I've heard up to 10 times the concentration of vitamin C than a lemon. They are very sour. A good substitute for a lemon in the Pacific Northwest as citrus does not grow here outside. You do have to have a male plant. This is a male right next to it. Males do not produce fruit. They only produce pollen for the females. Now, they do not grow very large. However, different cultivars can grow larger than some. I have, there's one back there, that's Titan. Now this bush right here is larger than this one. This is um, Botanica, actually. My garden's gift is over there. I might have misspoken earlier. I might have said that this is garden's gift. This is Botanica. This is Titan. Titan just means that the bush is much larger. The berries are a little bit smaller than Botanica. A little bit smaller, not much. It's not as heavy a producer as Botanica, but it's a larger bush. So if you're having trouble getting some vigor on your sea berries, then maybe you could plant Titan. However, I'm really gonna focus on planting more of this variety. Botanica just because of the harvest on this is just phenomenal. I mean, they're just loaded. This, this berry is used in all sorts of ways. You can make drinks out of it, mix it into, make, make lemonades without lemons. A lot of skincare products are made out of this because of the omega-3s, omega-6s all the fatty acids that are in this. A very medicinal berry, considered by some people. A very valuable berry to plant in your orchard. The other benefit of this is, notice I've kind of intermingled these trees in my orchard here. I have uh, cherry, sour cherry peaches. I have another peach that's grafted over here and apricot right there. Um, well, there's apricots on, it's actually a plum tree, but there's apricots grafted to it. There's a pear right here. This is elderberry blooming in the background. This is gilder rose. Uh, I'll talk about that in a different video. So what I was trying to get at is this bush, since it has the ability to fix nitrogen into the soil, can enrich the soil and help the trees next to it. So you can intermingle 
uh, put nitrogen fixers every other every third tree or something in your orchard or or in between and it's not going to take away or compete with your other trees for nutrients it will actually help feed the other trees in your orchard and help them grow since it has the ability to fix nitrogen now the nitrogen fixation um, is a kind of a debatable topic because oftentimes it really won't release much nitrogen to your surrounding trees unless you give it a hard prune which kind of forces some of the nitrogen nodules to release but maybe maybe it'll release without pruning i haven't really dove that deep into this topic but i do know that if you do end up pruning this any uh nitrogen fixer like an alder um, black locust, honey locust, sea berry, um, there's autumn olives, uh, all these nitrogen fixers that you can plant in your permaculture orchards to kind of help with enriching the soil. And this is one of my favorites because it doesn't really take up a lot of space. The berries are just such a high value, a high concentration, very high in vitamins and omegas that um, I think that this is just a very valuable bush to have in your yard regardless of its nitrogen fixation or not. But it has that ability and that's also really cool. Here is Garden's Gift. garden's gift maybe um, these are all younger trees I planted them maybe five years ago notice garden's gift smaller they all have slightly a different taste to them slightly different ripening periods all sour and all packed with vitamin C still edible you can eat them right off the tree just know that if you're not a uh, a person that likes sour things you're probably not gonna like to eat this right off the tree but this could make some really good juices and lemonades so this is just not as loaded even though the bush is just as big this is the male again this is botanica so if you look at how loaded this is this is to make sure that I'm talking about the right tree Seaberry Botanica this is indeed Botanica look at how loaded loaded this is if you look inside the bush just berries and berries and it also shed a lot of its berries these are all dry berries that were shed a couple weeks earlier so potentially when this bush gets bigger it might even be able to hold a larger crop than this so just think about that look at that sea buckthorn Sea berry can be propagated by cutting. I could take a cutting early spring, stick it in the ground like I would a, a black currant and it will, it will root. I have propagated it like that before. So pretty easy to root them. Um, I've also rooted them in the summer with fresh cuttings. I've also, I've also done air layers on this. So fairly easy to propagate this plant look at this so I'm gonna show you by the way I didn't talk about thorns sea berry is known to be very thorny very very thorny some sea berries will be so thorny 
that even the thorns will have thorns on them. Now this one still has thorns. Still has thorns on it, but if, if you kind of look, it's relatively thornless, even though every now and then you'll come across a thorn. So these are, these are cultivar varieties. If you get a wild sea berry, it will be extremely thorny and extremely difficult to pick the bush. So be careful when you purchase your sea berry that you get a cultivar variety. One Green World sells them. Um, a lot of reputable nurseries will sell cultivars of sea berry or sea buckthorn. So be wise in choosing your cultivars. Titan is a very large bush and not as heavy a producer in my climate. In your climate, maybe a different variety will be a heavy producer. I'm gonna take you and show you um, another more wild cultivar that we have on the property. And I'll, we'll compare the fruit load on that one. This is the other sea buckthorn that we've had for many years. And before I planted the actual known cultivars, I thought that all sea, sea berries were like this. Notice how tiny the berries are on this one. They're not ripe yet. These are actually ripe at the very end of August, beginning of September. This is when, that's when these ripen up. And when they do ripen, they're still gonna be twice as small as the Botanica. I like how tiny those are. I'll rip them off. I'll rip a couple off for now. I mean, it's not an indication of how big they will be when they're ripe, but just to show you, compared to Botanica, how small these are currently. The tree is big. It does, it will look like it has more harvest once these turn orange, but it's still really slim and this bush has a lot more thorns. See if I can show you some of the thorns. Right there. Some thorns right there. Right there. So th this one actually doesn't have as many thorns as, as some do. Some of them, you'll see thorns coming out of the thorns. So this one's not the worst case scenario on thorns, but basically you don't get much of a harvest from a wild bush. So definitely plant, plant cultivars. There has been a lot of breeding work that's been done with sea buckthorn especially in Canada there's a lot of var varieties out there larger fruiting cultivars so go for something that has been selected uh, that's that would be my advice because you can get um, it'll be a lot easier to pick and you'll just get way more berries for the space that you use so thank you guys for watching if you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps my channel. Also motivates me to keep making videos like this. So thanks everyone and I'll see you next time.